Burns at 530. Thanks for joining us at 530. I'm Robert Burns. Absolutely not guilty. That is what Cedric Marks said while issuing his pleas on capital murder charges. Marks is accused in the deaths of Temple friends Jenna Scott and Michael Swearingen, as well as evidence tampering. Tonight, Fox 44 is Anna Thrash. In the courtroom this morning, Anna, tell us a little bit about Marks' demeanor inside. So many people are relieved tonight after we have gone through 19 days of bombings, two deaths, and at least four people that were injured. Right now, we want to send it over to Fox 44's West Rappaport. Close to 50,000 people in Waco could be headed to jail tonight. That's because the city has racked up a massive bill over the years, people ignoring demands to pay their tickets. Tonight, Fox 44 looked into thousands of warrants, breaking down the charges, one person avoiding arrest over just 12 cents. All in all, it's added up to over $16 million. Temple firefighters are investigating what caused a storage building to catch fire. This happened last night on North 4th Street over near Houston and French Avenue. Now, the fire was coming from a detached storage building in the backyard. Fortunately, there were no injuries. Kind of describe for us real quick since you've been out there for a few minutes now what the scene has been as far as you mentioned you saw some nurses out there. Have you spoken with anybody? Fox 44's Renee Summerhour joining us live outside the Toys R Us in Waco. Renee, for the longest time I did not want to grow up because I am a <laughs> Toys R Us kid. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one today in mourning though, right? A Waco woman obsessed with fitness tonight telling Fox 44 she cooks close to 800 meals a week. Now that's impressive as we close National Women's History Month. Breaking news right now and get you this as you can see. We are calling the race right now for U.S. Senator for Ted Cruz over Beto O'Rourke. Now Pat, when you see these numbers, again very close, but what does this say to you at this point with as many voters that turned out? This is Fox 44 News at 9. Well, there are the clouds and the lightning bolts. Severe thunderstorm warnings for several areas of central Texas tonight. We want to bring in Chief Meteorologist Mike LaPointe in right off the bat here. Mike, little cloudy outside right now, but looking at all this color on the radar, that has a chance to change very soon. Yeah, we do have severe thunderstorm watches that are out. But in your consumer report, Amazon wants to help its employees branch out and become entrepreneurs as the company announced a new initiative for their employees that are interested in launching their own package delivery business. For your consumer report, it might get a little more difficult to throw parties without the helium balloon loons that we're so used to getting from Party City because the retail giant announcing plans to close about 45 locations all because of a global helium shortage. Warm weather after that. Well, you know, you and the radar have been tracking enough storms this past month. I'm glad we can finally give you a couple days rest. I, I enjoy it. The radar's been turned off. Oh, good. All right, Mike, we had a nice break today from all the weather we saw the past couple days, but I feel like that has kind of come to an end. Yeah, the, uh, the yeah. pattern has ended Fun's already. <laughs> That's right. Time now to recap the top stories making headlines in Central Texas. Austin police a reported package explosion at a Goodwill has turned out to be an incendiary device and not a bomb. Still, though, a device designed to start a fire. People using the online dating apps tend to contact people who may be a little out of reach. Now, that's according to the researchers, not me. Yeah, it's a science. <laughs> Just a little bit. Try more than about 25% more desirable is what they say. Researchers are claiming this makes sense because rejection online tends to sting a little less than if you're actually shot down in person. If you recall, we had uh, a house explosion in Waco just a few days ago, on, I believe on Friday, where that was caused by lacquer. But there's so many things when you're building uh, a building and a facility like a hospital um, that can get in the way. There's boiler rooms, there's different uh, electrical uh, systems going on in there. So a lot of questions that still need to be answered as to exactly what caused this, who was working on it, and how they are at this point in the condition of those construction workers inside. Now talking about storm chasers out there, some of the things for homeowners and people who have seen some of the destruction, what do they look for now that they're seeing these strangers pop up? Door to door. Fox 44's Robert Burns joins us live tonight from Central Texas Marketplace with a first look inside the new restaurant. Robert. Hey, Leslie, this building has been shut down for close to three years now. Getting some new life, though, after that new lease was signed back in November. Take a look. This is Scotty's Brew House. Your first look inside. You can see the color scheme. It's very Waco. It's gold, it's green. They're clearly representing Baylor University. Really, though, a lot of things that could relate even to Twin Peaks has been removed, including that iconic front canopy outside. That thing is gone. One, because it's different branding. Two, the new owners, they want customers to feel comfortable. They want them to feel safe coming back on site as well. If you recall, back in 2015, nine people were killed, dozens more injured during that shootout in the parking lot. 
between law enforcement and biker gangs. Now, though, the Indiana-based brew house, well, they've made Waco and this location their first in all of Texas. Waco is a great sports town, and so when we were looking for the first place to be, uh, and the first place to come to Texas, Waco just made a lot of sense. It's a great sports town. It's really centrally located, and then th this specific location, we were just really excited about the traffic, uh, the brands that you know we're here with, that we're partnered with in this marketplace. All right, and as you can see, there are about 150 new employees here. Most of them right now, they are training at this point. That's because they have two uh, soft opening events coming up this weekend before they open up to the general public Monday, right in time for lunch. We're live in Central Texas Marketplace. Robert Burns, Fox 44 News. Six-year-old Faith Fortenberry needs at least five to ten minutes to get in and out of her mom's custom-built van a little longer now after someone ran over her ramp. I waited for my mom and then she came back and saying that somebody ran over her ramp. And I was like, what? Faith's mom, Leanne, says one woman showed little regard in April after damaging the mechanical plank in the parking lot of Waco's downtown Ninfa's restaurant. Somehow didn't see that my ramp was out and drove up over my ramp and stayed on the ramp. It was very defensive and said, you know, this she didn't do this and she had no idea and was kind of acting like it was my fault that she was illegally parked. Leanne posting the interaction on Facebook, getting thousands of reactions. When I looked at it, I was like, I thought it was like not this bad, but it is bad. There is a four degree angle or a four degree curve that's right here. The mom and daughter who lives with spinal muscular atrophy type 2 say they encounter inconsiderate drivers every day, making their decision to leave the house a difficult one. Sometimes we like people park on the lines, like they're not like all on the line, they're just like halfway, but I still can't get out. And at least once a week we have something and I'm always very nice and ask people to move or show them my daughter and tell them why it's important to park correctly. The two taking part in the Save My Spot campaign initiated by Braun Ability, the company that made their ramp. According to a recent study, 74% of people witnessed someone misusing handicapped spaces. Almost half didn't know the lines were for wheelchair ramps and nearly 30% didn't know you could use the spots for different disabilities. Now Leanne leaves behind these stickers, letting you know you're in the way of a little girl with somewhere to go. I would have to stay home, just do nothing. It wouldn't be that fun, and we could pay for another one, but it's like lots of money. Of the 1.2 million firefighters in the country, more than half of them are volunteers, meaning roughly a third of the nation's population is protected by mostly or all volunteer fire departments. And that's no different here in Central Texas, where those numbers stand out even more. Some agencies now creeping toward crisis mode. When the sirens blare, the first firefighters on the scene are likely a trio of Central Texas senior citizens. Ready to go. Woodway's volunteer firefighters range from age 20 to 60. The majority of the more experienced crew come a bit older, but that's not for lack of recruiting. But a lot of the young people that we do get are in no kind of physical condition to do this kind of work. They, they just don't have the, the body build, they don't have the tone, they don't have the endurance, and quite frankly, they don't have the desire. Ray Dobbs, Bert Hernandez, and Ben Selman have battled blazes for a combined 80 years. The department's struggles, though, are the same all over. Staffing at the nation's volunteer firefighter departments have dropped 15% over the last 30 years. That's according to the volunteer firefighter fact sheet. All while emergency calls have tripled, meaning smaller markets are feeling the heat first. They didn't have the tax base to be where they needed to be people-wise, so they relied on the volunteers. Those people are in deep trouble. The dramatic decline comes as volunteers say people are more connected with their personal life than with public service. Being blunt, the next generation just isn't interested in helping. A lot of those skills as far as the public service are not taught at home like they used to be. Uh, people are more eye-oriented. 
I hate to say it that way, but that's what it is. It's a dangerous gig, especially if it's unpaid. More than half the firefighters who died in 2016 were volunteers. It could be a, a massive car wreck, could be multiple fatalities, it could be a house fire, structure fire, church fire, all of them are bad. The first thing is somebody's having a horrible day, calm down so I can help them. But even if so many years, that charge when the pager goes off, it does not go away. The millennial recruiting rut puts outlying areas and smaller cities at risk. In the rural areas where the tax base doesn't support it, what you're going to see is the urban areas trying to cover and they're not going to get covered. So until backup can withstand the training, these three will keep suiting up and saving lives. But there's a dangerous deadline looming. You have to be competent, you have to maintain training, you have to give up family and home life, and people just don't want to make those kind of commitments. You see things happening like are happening in the um, flooding in the hurricanes, where citizens untrained are going to step up and they're going to try to help and they're going to get hurt. Well, there's also a push in Congress to address the volunteer shortage. A plan backed by senators from Montana and Missouri actually calls for someone's student loan debt to be paid off if they serve as a volunteer firefighter for one decade. That bill is still, though, at the very early stages.